Hey everyone, it's Jeremiah again. Um, my last video, um, I was talking about clothing um, and how I was going to put the, or do that on the uh, on this video. Um, now, when it comes to like prepper clothing, um, you can, I guess, wear anything. Um, in most cases, people probably will be wearing just about anything. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna discuss a little more into like camouflage, because um, if you are trying to hide, you definitely want to blend in with your background, and camouflage allows you to do that. Um, I actually have three different types of camouflage. Um, one is like this one you see here. It's uh, the, the digital camouflage the army uses. Um, then I have like the hunter's camouflage where it looks like you know leaves and acorns and trees and limbs and stuff like that uh... then i have the uh... the original bdu camouflage that the army used before this before this digital stuff uh... and then i'm gonna go over basically what they're used for um, the differences uh... this digital camouflage here actually is not for uh, blending into to, into the woods, because uh, if that were the case, they would still be using the woodland camo that they used in the BDUs. This is actually what you would think it's for. It's digital camouflage. Uh, this actually helps break up your silhouette if you are being recorded by a camera. Um, and I've actually seen what this camouflage looks like on camera, and. Uh, you can still kind of tell it's a person, but if they're far enough away, you don't really, you can't really tell. Um, so it does work pretty good for that. And another one of the differences uh, with this camouflage is uh, this little tab here, this little black thing. Now what this is is when uh, uh, when they have this little black box here exposed. Um, when the uh, when the soldiers or the pilots in the uh, helicopters are actually looking down, this will glow a bright color. It actually looks like there's a light on their shoulder, even though there's not. This helps or this lets the pilot know, and you know, when they see these, that these are American soldiers, and not shoot at them. Which is actually a pretty neat little thing, but. Uh, anybody using night vision will also see it. So I would just keep it covered up. Um, of course, I'm not in a wartime situation, so uh, I don't really need that. I would just keep it covered up anyway. Um, really like this this jacket, you know, because you got pockets here. On the, you got breath, two bre uh, two breast pockets. Then you got a big pocket here. Um, <laughs> Actually, pretty funny thing about this tag here. Uh, this actually stands for Dasami Civilian Militia. This is something my cousin did. I don't, it's kind of weird, but you know, whatever. Uh, of course, got, got the good old American flag on here. So, uh, my girlfriend actually noticed that. And she said, "That's backwards." Yeah, well, it's done for a reason. Stars march into battle, or stars first into battle, or whatever. Um, but you know, th this is uh, cotton, no, uh, cotton, uh, I don't know, it doesn't say, but it's uh, cotton ripstop, uh, so it's pretty good material. Uh, I have three, no, I have two full sets of uh, of these left. Uh, the other ones I had to turn in when I got out of the military. Um, okay, now the next one is like this mossy oak kind of stuff. Uh, this is actually just a it's a it's a thin kind of compression wear uh, material, uh, moisture wicking that kind of thing. Uh, it's a pretty good shirt. Um, it is the breakup infinity camo. I actually like this stuff pretty well. Uh, this helps break up the human silhouette in the woods. Um, according to 
uh, the clothing designers or you know the people who design this type of uh, camouflage, uh, according to the people at Mossy Oak, um, deer see a lot differently than humans do. Uh, we, you know, we see in color. Um, for the most part, deer don't see in color. They actually see in more of a black and white, which actually helps the outlines of things stick out more. Um, and that's how deer can spot us very easily. Uh, so this just helps us blend in a little better with our background. Um, but this stuff would probably work better if you're trying to hide from people. Um, because, because of the fact that we see, you know, with, uh, uh, with color, it actually helps us blend better um, when you're trying to hide from people. Uh, now, of course, when you get into, like, ghillie suits, that would probably be one of the best things. Now, whether you want to buy one, make your own, uh, the thing is, is if you make your own, you're going to have to constantly keep up with it. You know, when, you know, if you take small tree branches with leaves and stuff on it and you try to make yourself blend in with another bush or something, that stuff dies, turns brown, and you're, you constantly have to keep working at it. Uh, so a uh, per you know, one you would purchase is just made of cloth. You know, it's you know, but it won't wear out, or it, well, it will, but it it takes a while. You know, that stuff lasts longer. Probably works pretty well. Um, but ghillie suits that'd probably be another thing. Really help you hide out. You know, if you're trying to hide out in the woods or whatever. Of course, this is also any of the bad situations that could possibly happen you know the reason why preppers do what they do I'm not suggesting you go do something illegal and then try to hide out in the woods from the police that's not what I'm talking about this is the situation where there wouldn't be any and you're just trying to stay hidden away from other people that could be out there taking your stuff I'm not in any way suggesting you do any illegal activity that could get you in trouble with the police you don't want to do that that's not what I'm here for at all. Alright, and then there's this. It's another mossy oak. Uh, I actually have pants in here uh, around this hanger. So I've got pants and jacket. This is, this is the heavier winter jacket. Um, keeps me pretty warm even even if it's you know five ten degrees outside. This jacket's not really made for that, but I'm a pretty warm person. I put off a lot of heat, so this jacket, it does nicely for me. Um, but last hunting season, I wore it out. And, um, even though I was sitting completely still, it was 28 degrees outside and snowing, and I was still sweating. So I just, I just decided I had to get something a little bit thinner which is this one right here. This is, uh, this one actually has scent control. That's what this little lining here says. Uh, yep, yeah, scent control. Uh, it's, it's a lot thinner. Um, the outside of this is actually um, waterproof. It's not water resistant. The water doesn't just wick right off of it. Uh, but there is a lining uh, on the back of this outer shell, you can actually feel it if you rub your fingers in it. It's like a rubberized kind of stuff. It keeps water from actually going through the material. And it's got a hood. Uh, um, but it's it's pretty nice. I mean, it's, I guess I'll find out, you know, next week because deer season, or well, rifle season's coming up. So. Uh, so I'll give that a try. All right, and then there's, well, hang on. Let me clear this off, get this stuff out of the way. All right, then the last type of camo that I have, this is also 
as you can see from the name, that's my name. Uh, this is this was actually the very first um, field jacket that I got. Um, they were in the process of changing everybody over to digital camouflage. Uh, so they still did not have the ACU field jackets. So I had ACUs with this jacket and I kind of looked funny. But whatever. Um, they got I got to keep this too because they were phasing out all the BDU stuff. Uh, these This is the BDU. This is the Woodland Camouflage. Uh, this is probably one of the most popular ones. Everybody that wears camouflage, whether they're army or not, you know, if they just buy it and wear it, this is most likely what you're going to see. Not a lot of people are fans of the ACUs. Most of us that were in the army didn't even like them. Because we always had a joke, what are we trying to hide from the computer screen? But, you know, whatever. Um, this is... Uh, this type of camouflage was used uh, from, I think, yeah, slightly into Vietnam, because Korea they still had the olive drab, you know, the the green like like this here, but the entire uniform was that color. There was no camouflage; it was just green color, you know, completely green. Um, but I think they started bringing this stuff out uh, late stages of Vietnam then all the way through the 70s and 80s and the 90s and probably even early 2000s this stuff was still being used um, uh, but I don't have I don't have any liners for either of my uh, field jackets because that's part of the, T, uh, the TA-50. That's everything. That's all the stuff that you have to return to the Army when you get out. Um, some of it, like, if, well, if you're in the military for a really long time, they probably just let you keep it. Uh, especially if you've used the same stuff for the entire time you've been there. But I wasn't in for very long, so I had to give all that stuff back. Um, but I, you know, if you got a nice wool sweater or a hoodie uh, any kind of poly pros uh, which is another another type of uh, thermal uh, thermal underwears and stuff like that um, but these jackets are they're 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 pretty nice you know the they're not waterproof but or I mean they're not they're not water resistant but you'll stay fairly dry in them, uh, short of like a torrential downpour, whatever. Um, and then of course I've got uh, the ACU, I've got ACU hats, I have an ACU boonie hat. Uh, then I have um, my uh, mossy oak hat here that goes with it. I also have, it, it's kind of like a, a cowboy hat, but it doesn't, you know, bend up on the sides. Uh, it's just completely flat, but it's um, real tree. Uh, I couldn't get, um, I couldn't get a hat like that to match the, the mossy oak. So I ended up buying a real tree hat. Uh, it just kind of sits sits in my room. I don't really use it for much, uh, except if I'm out in the sun, you know, I'll, I'll wear it to keep the sun out of my head and off my neck. Um, which is, you know, another good thing that you would want to add to, like, prepper supplies. You know, you want your sunscreen. That sunscreen and uh, insect repellent. Um, but, okay, I'm going getting towards 15 minutes here. Um, Actually, there is one more thing. I'll try to cut it before 16 minutes. Um, boots. Uh, you, you're you're going to want something that's going to keep your feet dry. Uh, galoshes would work. Um, of course, I have my old combat boots from the Army. The, the tan desert boots. They're winter boots. I don't have the summers anymore. Uh, those got stolen. 
Um, I have my I have the winter boots though. They're sealed all the way up to the top. The tongue is actually attached all the way to the top of the boot, so keep your feet dry. Um, you could probably go buy Timberland or you know stuff like that. Uh, some good, uh, or you could probably even get waders. You know the things that people use to go fishing. They go all the way up to the waist. Uh, keep you dry. Th those would work pretty good too. Um, you just you want something to keep your feet dry. Um, you want to put uh, uh, wool socks in your uh, in your prepping kit. Um, you know just in case because you know. You want your feet to stay warm if it's cold outside, um, but definitely keep your feet dry. That's you, you can't stress that enough. You know you got to keep your feet dry, keep your feet warm. Um, uh, let's see. Um, now for like army gear or whatever. Well, see, there's 16 minutes there, and I'm already past that. So, uh, so I'll just try. I'll try to end this quickly. I just, but I just have a few more more points I have to make um, if you're going out and buying a lot of tactical gear like tactical vests that that's good uh, I'm thinking of doing the same thing of course I'm actually thinking about getting the uh, bulletproof vests with the uh, AR 500 ballistic steel plates um, they're not they're nowhere near as expensive as the sappy plates like the army uses um, and they're definitely a lot more reusable than the sappy plates um, yeah, you, you, you'd want to, you know, have something to protect yourself just in case you, you were to get shot. Um, and the AR-500 plates work well for everything from handguns all the way up to a 308 round. Um, I've actually seen videos on YouTube where someone shot it with a regular 50 caliber BMG round and it did not penetrate. Um, of course, if you shoot that with the armor-piercing uh, 50 cal yeah, it's, it's probably going to punch right through it. Um, but, you know, if you're using a 50 BMG to snipe people, there's something wrong with you. That's an expensive round, and that's way overkill. Uh, okay. Um, I can't really think of anything else, because uh, I covered clothing or camouflage, um, headwear or headgear, uh, oh, head uh, as in headgear. Um, you can get um, uh, ACH, which is Army Combat Helmet. You can get those at pawn shops. You can get them at Army surplus stores. That'd probably be a good addition. You want to you want to protect your head. Um, uh, the knee pads and elbow pads is not a necessity, but if you do a lot of if there's going to be any times where you're I, I know some people are going to get a snicker about this because it's, you know, kind of funny, but if you're ever on your knees a lot, ha ha ha, you're going to need, you know, some knee pads and elbow pads. Because believe me, when you're marching around or walking around whatever in the woods and you've got a bunch of stuff on your back, if you take a knee, as they say, that shit hurts, believe me, I know. Uh, and any, anybody that's been in the, in the army who's you know, done ruck marches, you take a knee, it hurts. So get some knee ba knee pads, elbow pads, um, good boots, wool socks, um, thermal underwear, um, moisture wicking materials, um, waterproof or water resistant. There is a difference. Water resistant means the water will just roll right off of it waterproof means that the water will not go through it so there is a difference just depending on whatever you want usually the water resistant clothing is not going to be very warm waterproof that's a different story they can you can have a jacket that's really thick or not at all so uh, all right well I'm gonna go ahead and end it here uh, if you have any any questions or comments just let me know and I'll try to answer them all right have a nice day